or maybe one of those trusted coworkers that you have that maybe you've become friends with tells you about rumors floating around about your future at the company is the hot topic of the office gossip. Most. By the way, can I tell you something, guys? People go to work expecting to get what they didn't get at home and, for example, in their social lives, right? Hey guys, Sonny Bryson here, and welcome back to the show. And this video right here is about to be hilarious. Like, I just feel like it's gonna be funny because in reality, this video right here is all about signs that you are about to get fired, okay? And by the way, this reminds me of this one time when my employer, my boss, for example, was about to get fired and the company had him, for example, train somebody, write everything that he actually does. And he was like, oh, I'm doing so good, so good. And then he got fired. And he was like crying, like a grown man crying. You know, it really, it really, it really hurt his feelings, okay? But overall, what are the signs that actually show that you are about to get fired? And how do you prepare? You know, very, very risky thing is just to be on just one stream of income. But even more risky is to have like this blind loyalty towards a company that does not have the same loyalty towards you. You know, I respect my friends so much. In reality, he had a very good job with a company, but he was still looking for other opportunities that might be better and might appreciate me more. And today, he's working for an amazing company. It's a Fortune 500 company, by the way, and he's doing a great job. One of my best friends, okay? And I like I like to show off my friends because they do amazing jobs. However, though, let's find out exactly what's going on here and what the signs actually are. Without further ado, like, subscribe, hit the bell to get notified, and let's find out what the heck are the signs that your boy is about to get fired. Yeah, I'm about to get canned. Are you wondering if your toxic boss is trying to get rid of you? I know a lot of you that watch my channel are great at what you do, and this is not something that- I don't know who this girl is. I don't know who this lady is. You know, this is why I like YouTube. You meet people every you day. You should have to be worried about. But you're in a toxic work environment, and that creates unpredictability. And By the way, if you are in a toxic work environment, stop trying to get bad people to like you by doing things that go beyond your job. Try to exercise healthy boundaries. And if someone's very toxic, then guess what? Be professional, of course, but professional does not mean be like a roller or be like a like a mat on the floor, right? You do your job, but no one is going to roll over me like I'm like a, like a car. And instability. So today I'm covering the seven signs that you are going to get fired, even if it's totally unfair. Hello. Seven signs. Hello, my friends, and if you're new here, welcome. My name is Jennifer Brick, and I'm Jennifer Brick. I'm your new career bestie. Around here, we talk about career success, navigating obstacles at work, and toxic work environments. If you are like, yes, I need more of that in my life, tap the subscription button and the notification bell. Also, I post pretty much daily over on LinkedIn as well as on Instagram. This is cool, guys. These interests are very long, so by if the you way. Want, if you're into it. So the first sign that you're going to get fired is that you have a decrease in your performance review rating or your negative feedback and or performance reviews. You're receiving negative feedback from your manager. And by the way, a great thing to do, by the way, guess what? If you are receiving negative feedback, it might just be that your work is trash. Let's be honest, right? But a great way to kind of like get ahead of this is say like, hey, what can I do? to improve my work like what are you looking for you know a lot of times we think we know what someone wants but we don't know that's why it's so important to have a conversation and actually act this of course despite the fact that you are a steady performer who is consistently delivering results because when you're digging into it what you're actually finding behind that feedback and behind those performance reviews is a lot of nitpicking for example maybe Oh, that might be true. You achieved the KPI, like you hate your sales quota, but they didn't like the way in which you did it. So they're taking issue with that. I hate those people. Like, like they focus so much on the, on the, it reminds me of my math teacher. Oh, you got the answer, but I didn't like your method. It just, I don't like it. I don't like it. Even though the outcome was the outcome that was necessary. Another thing that arises is that a lot of the negative feedback. This lady has very long eyelashes on. Or the negative performance. Not judging anybody, but I'm, I'm just noticing it, right? I'm just noticing it. Reviews guys. is based on attitude or fit. Now, of course, if you have an attitude problem or if you're a terrible culture fit for the company overall, you don't want to work. Though. Those things would be valid. However, the big issue that I take here and get your tea ready for this rant is that. Where's my tea? I got water and it's empty. Ugh. Behind those things is really just saying you're not like us. And this whole Whoa. culture fit BS is something that bosses and HR teams are hiding behind in order to discriminate and to make sure that everyone is. 
I mean that that that's the thing, you know what I'm saying? Um this can be a good thing or a bad thing, you know, if the company culture is very like upsy, um, motivational and you're like a downer and you're bringing everybody down and also your work is not that great, it might be like a like you're not the right fit, you know. When you're hiring somebody, yeah, you want to make sure they're right for the job, but you want to make sure the company is right for them because if the company's not right for them, it's just not going to be a great transaction and that's not what you want. You want a win-win, not like a I win, you lose or uh, let's just meet in the middle. You want to win-win. It's win. exactly the same. It's how teams utterly lack diversity and then they're like, oh, why do I have a diversity problem? Anyways, I could probably make an entire video, so I will like... That's like a separate Cut topic. that one off there for today. But if you want that video, let me know in the comments. Now, in some cases that I've seen and stories that I have heard from people on this point is that they've been doing the exact same thing, getting the exact same results, have no changes in their general relationships with their teams. That's an HR problem. Sounds like a lawsuit to me. The people that they work with, however, all of a sudden they're starting to get this negative feedback, despite the fact that they previously got positive feedback for exactly the same things. Lawsuit. The second warning sign that you might see that maybe you're gonna get fired is that work that would typically be assigned to you is being assigned to other coworkers. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Not just that, like the work that would be assigned to you is being assigned to other people, but they're also asking you to train that person on how to do your work. <laughs> that's that's a telltale. That's a scare. By the way, this I laugh, I joke. Honestly, I joke, but it's scary stuff. You know, when you finna get fired and you're about to be unemployed. For example, if you are the project manager for a particular client and you've managed multiple projects with them over the span of their life cycle with your company, but all of a sudden on the next project, you're not the one being assigned to it. And mm. it's going to one of your coworkers. I like Jennifer. Jennifer is nice. Or if you're in sales, maybe leads that are in your region and should be yours are being assigned to one of your coworkers, leaving you like, WTF, that should be mine. Why am I being left out? And the reason why they might be doing this and not saying that this always means that you're going to get fired. This you have to have a conversation, right? Be, be an adult, be an adult. For any of these signs, FYI. But the reason why this can be a sign that you're about to be fired is because... I, I chose this video for this, for this channel because there's this whole thing going on that says that basically 40% of Americans are about to quit their jobs, but also people might get fired too, right? So ne never, never forget. Never forget. Your manager doesn't want to deal with reassigning a whole bunch of work and things in flight when they're not going to have the knowledge behind it. So they begin to redirect work. So it makes transitioning you out of the business a, a lot easier. little bit easier on your team who is going to take on the work that you would usually take on. Now the third sign you're going it's kind of crazy how replaceable you are. Going right? to get fired. This is a really big one. And this is a big red alarm bell if all of a sudden this starts happening. Your manager starts taking a lot of notes and sending follow-ups after each conversation that you have. Why is this? Oh, oh, yeah. It's like, I, I, this happened to me once, not like in a work, in a, in a work environment, but it happened to me with my lease, right? Um, the lady was like, you know, Tommy, if you're going to leave, let's just let's contact each other through email. That way I can have a record of everything, you know. It's like you you, <laughs> you want extensive notes on everything through extensive record. This is such a big blaring warning sign that you're going to get fired, you ask? Because they're creating a paper trail, especially in big organizations that are worried about getting sued if they let someone go. Yeah. Yeah. The reason yeah. why they're keeping records is to go through the formal process that HR is probably making them go through. They can't just walk in and be like, you're fired, at least not in most companies. Cause yeah, because they want to have a record like, hey, you did this incorrectly. OK, I'll do better. You did this incorrectly. Oh, I'll do better here. You know, this is why you got to be professional. They are afraid of lawsuits. Now, if this is the situation, a lawsuit is not a joke. Situation, I want you to do two things. First of all, make sure you are keeping your own paper trail as well. Make sure you are documenting the things that are happening. Make sure that you're documenting any adverse things, not to get too dramatic, that are going to give context to the situation. And hopefully this is not something that is... 
I would recommend. ever going to be needed or escalate, but just in case, do make sure that you're keeping your own records. The other thing is in those emails where they're, you know, sending the summary of this is what happened and this is what I expect, or if they're trying to convey that you didn't do something that you did or that something was under standard when you know that you hit the mark or something like that, you can also reply on those messages. Now, this is not for provide factual responses. That is good. You know, I think I think this is why it's so important to have healthy boundaries. If my boss hits me up saying like, hey, you did a, this job a bad way, I'm going to respond saying like, hey, um, I did things up to the same standard as I did them before. Can you please tell me exactly what I need to do to give it to you in a different manner if that's what you basically want? Is that professional, right? But also stern, not getting BS or getting finessed, right? But if you just say admit guilt, for example, you don't want that. An argument, it's not to debate, it's not to yeah. be well like, well said, Jennifer. you're wrong because guess what? They're your boss and that is not up for negotiation. But when you reply, just reply with they're your boss, but you are not a slave, right? You're entering a legal contract agreement between someone. You work because you want to work, right? So that's why you have so important to have, for example, um, uh, what's it called? Uh, a job description. Very important. Clarity on the facts. And again, this is going to add to your paper trail. And all you want to do there is to clearly state anything that they have gotten wrong and to document actions that you are taking. It's also a great place to request clarification. The fourth sign that you might get fired at work is an extraordinarily toxic behavior. And that is they are setting you up to fail. Oh, that's just nasty. And this show I, I made a mistake in my in my in my I think it was my it was a it was a job in school. And I made a mistake trying to get somebody with a very nasty, disgusting, toxic attitude, trying to get them to like me. Eventually I did, but it was never good enough. You know, like you don't change that person or anything like that. So you have to come to an acceptance. You know, I do my job, I do it very well. Um, but I was being asked to get somebody coffee, um, and as as long as I did those things, I was liked, right? But when I, I, I never stopped doing them, I'll be fully transparent here, but I should have. If I knew what I need today, I'll be like, hey, I'm, I'm sorry, I'm not getting you coffee. If you want me to get you coffee, do you want me to save this work for later or whatever it is, you know what I mean? So is that a part of my job description? You know, polite, but firm, you know? And by the way, not to say, for example, like you're my coworker, I can't do your favor every now and then, but when it comes like a habit, it can be a problem. Shows up in a ton of different ways. First, they're giving you the impossible tasks. Oh, this person has been working on this problem for two years. You have a week to solve it. Similarly, they might just be giving you too much work where you know that the capacity is 2x or 3x what anyone else is dealing with and what would be a reasonable workload given the time and importance. Communication is key. So you say, for example, hey, this work is going to take me X amount of time and also have a paper trail. Um, here's why. So and you gave me, for example, three job assignments and an average takes this long. So which one do you want me to focus on first? You know, in order for me to actually meet your goal or whatever it is or whatever. It is. By the way, when you work in a company like this, you probably don't want to stay there long, but you don't want to get finessed. So you want to have your own paper trail, obviously. And most importantly, you want to be looking for another job. The goal is not to figure out a way to win there. The goal is that if you're not happy there and it's toxic, get the heck out of there, man. It's like being in a toilet, like living in a toilet, and you're like, I'm just trying to like um, put on a mask so I don't got to get infected. No, you don't want to live in a toilet. You don't want to live in a bathroom. Get, get the heck out of there. ...of the work that you are doing. This can also show up in sabotaging the work that you're doing, such as leaving you out of key meetings on projects that you're working on or failing to communicate important things that cause you to mess up in the future. And again, I know a lot of these behaviors are very prevalent in toxic work environments, but getting fired from a toxic work environment is also something that happens not infrequently. While it's annoying and unfair, fair when your toxic boss is burying you under a pile of work in order to try to fire you. Sometimes when you are being set up to fail, you can actually use this as an opportunity in disguise. Yes, yes, yes. Because when they're assigning you to these impossible tasks, what it really is is an invitation for you to flex the ways that you stand out and your unique awesomeness quotient. No, no, that's stupid. Don't again, don't try to make these people like like you or whatever. If they're giving you impossible tasks, don't try to go beyond or anything like that. Like you do your job. That's what. You, I'm, by the way, I'm not trying to prevent anybody from working very hard. 
But if someone is giving you impossible tasks and you are always doing them, guess what happens? You become the impossible person in the, in, in the work area. I remember I had like this um this coworker of mine and our job was to kind of like document folders and then fold them into the cabinet or whatever it was. Very simple work. But I did like triple what he did and I got paid the same amount of money that he got paid. It never changed. I was told like, hey, you do a great job. <laughs> But you get paid minimum wage. I'm sorry. It's just how it works. You know what I mean? So, and then I finally, it finally clicked. I was like, you know, I'm not going to do all this stuff. I'm just, I'm just not. So I'm going to do my work based on what a timely fashion actually is. And if I'm, if you feel bad about it, let's get him to actually pick up the pace. Right? So I'm not a, I'm not a, uh, I'm not an emergency person. I do my work the correct way. Your UAQ. And yeah, maybe it's not going to salvage your job at the place that you're at. And who wants to stay in that toxic work? Exactly. environment anyway. However, you can think of this as ways that you're building your resume and giving you reasons to flex on LinkedIn so that your next opportunity falls into your lap. No, use this opportunity to build your paper trail and email on this person and sell them, and, and, and set up, for example, boundaries. Like, hey, you gave me three, four assignments. These usually take X amount of time. Um, you told me to do it in this manner. Um, which one do you want me to focus on? Or can I have some help here? Because it's literally a lot of work. You know what I mean? And not to throw anybody under the bus, but it takes Jonathan like 50 days to get this done. Bro, I'm not, nobody's about to get me, no. No, 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 no. Now, if that sounds good, you need to make sure that you know what your UAQ is so that you know what you should be focusing on. UAQ? What is that called? Is that like like, like, a, like a standard, like um, an employment value from like in that? In order to stage yourself for the next step in your career. If you haven't already, <laughs> download my free UAQ starter kit. UAQ starter kit. Let's see, what does A stand for? What does U stand for? It can't stand for unemployment. It sounds to me like a like a career glow up, UAQ. Um, maybe like a, it sounds, like honestly, it sounds to me like a, like what your value is as an employee. The link is in the description. And this actually brings me to the next sign that you might get fired from your job. And that is that relationships that you have at work are starting to become distant. Now, perhaps your boss is becoming distant and unavailable. Maybe that's maybe fine. you typically have a regular one on one, but they're consistently canceling them. Or maybe coworkers that you used to be close with and had lunch with and chatted with all the time are now really starting to distance themselves from you. Or maybe one of those trusted coworkers that you have that maybe you've become friends with tells you about rumors floating around about your future at the company is the hot topic of the office gossip. Most. By the way, can I tell you something, guys? People go to work expecting to get what they didn't get at home and for example in their social lives right you go to work as an adult to do a job right you build healthy relationships there but that's not your family you know those are your co-workers some of them can become your friends but your friends a lot of the times are supposed to be external if you want support join a support group i know it sounds mean i'm sorry but it's true right you want friends join a support group go to church right join a club Make friends like that, but don't go to work and build your whole life around this job and then you lose a job and then you have nothing. Like people legit, like they 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 end things because they lose a job and by losing that job, it's not just the money, but they lose everything. Don't be that person, right? You wanna make sure establish healthy relationships outside of that work area. It's just where I work, right? If your whole life is just consumption based on work, it's a very unhealthy life. People want to distance themselves from someone who isn't, let's put it this way, falling under the graces of the boss. And if there is suspicion or some semblance that you are going to be exiting the organization unceremoniously, people might want to distance themselves from yeah, because before they get caught in the in the in the crossfire. That. I'm not saying that it's okay. I'm saying that this is sometimes behavior that you can observe. And I know that Yo, make a make a document stuff, man. Lawsuit. This can be particularly helpful if you have developed And notice I'm saying like lawsuit because it's unfair, right? I'm not promoting or saying like, "Hey, you're a terrible employee, you do terrible things and now you want to you want to sue," right? I'm saying like if you're being treated unfairly um for factors that actually make sense, lawsuit right? Lawsuit. Friendships with your coworkers, or if in general you had a better relationship with your boss. And this is one of the reasons why I think that coworkers really, for the most part, are not your friends. But yes, yes. Thank you. Thank you. You already know my stance on that. So on that note, let's move into.
And I don't know the stance. I'm watching your video for the first time. Stop saying all these fancy words and break things down. To the sixth sign that you might get fired from your job. And this is another big one. And it's that you're placed on a performance improvement plan. Oh, that <laughs> guys, that's code word for, hey, if you don't improve, we're going to kick you out. You know, this is my thing, right? If I'm placed on this performance improvement plans, aka PIM, a PMP, P I'm a PIM, you know, you know that song, guys? Um, 50 Cent. Um, if I'm placed on this thing, right, I'm going to make sure that, for example, everything is detailed. Like, what are you looking for? You know, people like all these, like, um, all these, like, uh, ugh, fuzzy words. I want concrete words. Also called a PIP for short. Whether or not it's justified, your boss and HR have conspired to put you onto a performance conspire improvement plan and this is so dramatic you know oh, this, is, this is so much drama guys this is so much drama that performance but I like improvement it. plan is not one that they're setting you up to succeed with c.4 when a performance improvement plan is well constructed and done the way that really they should be is that it should be getting you the tools and the resources and the focus that you need in order to succeed and yeah, improve. to improve your performance. That's why it's called in a performance improvement plan. Unfo or or PIMP. I mean, PIP. Sorry about that, guys. <laughs> Fortunately, too many organizations have structured PIPs so that they are a way of coaching people out of the business. And it's one step away Sheesh. from That's nasty. Cansville. That's slime. What does Cansville mean? Does that mean cancel or something? And the way that you can differentiate between this is a PEP that is really structured to help you succeed or one that you're being set up to fail is really looking at the performance improvement plan and assessing how achievable it is. Are they asking the impossible from you? And this You know, I used to do I used to go beyond and above for, for my last job. The last job I had was at a, a New York Sports Club um, data entry. And I did double to triple the work as my co-workers you can ask i don't care i did a lot of work and i w i came in for example as a part-timer from like another company kind of like a like a temp employee and they try to get me to be hired in and i was like yo this is gonna be awesome you know but when everybody get a job guys remember you're gonna become the average of wherever you hang around the most with so that might be for example your work environment and i was like yo this this thing right here is so toxic they're going to drain the life out of me. And, you know, not to say this is kind of crazy, but my dad passed away during that time. And that really forced me to refocus and say, hey, I'm good. But I would not be surprised. I would have still been in New York. I would have never did my videos. I would have stuck to that and be making, for example, like $2,000, $3,000. OK, and that would have been trash. This right here is my fiance giving me a call, guys. Give me a second. All right, guys, so that right there was my fiance. So shout out to my fiance, okay? But yeah, I, I would have been trapped in that company. You know, you got to be careful where you accept. You know, I'm, I'm very judgmental. I'm very extreme judgmental when it comes to myself and what I choose to surround myself with. See, I, see what I did this there? This is seemingly a formality and an excuse that they're going to use in order to fire you from your job. Or is this something that they're actually investing into you and is going to help you in your... By the way, it's very expensive to fire someone. It's very expensive also to hire somebody. So a proper company would want to protect their investment. career. Because if it's the former, that's a sign that you need to get your docs in a row and quacking because they are setting... Oh, this guy, this girl's funny. You up to fire you. And that brings us to the seventh sign that you are going to get fired from your job. And really, I... The last one, guys. Think that this sign is undervalued and under-indexed because I think that there's a lot to this one. And that sign is trusting your gut. You know when you... Trust your gut. Well, let's end the video right there, guys, because I'm going to trust my gut and go ahead and... Kind of have a give feeling that there's right something here. funny going... I like... It was a great video. You did a great job, Jennifer Brick. And I'm going to go ahead and subscribe to the channel also. I really, 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 really like this video. It was pretty cool. On top of that, guys, overall, I like this a lot. You know, it's very important to know the good and to know the bad. So if you have a job and you're getting all these freaky signs, um, start preparing. You know, get go to college, get a course, get a license, apply for other jobs, start looking out there. 
I, I know people that they use their company time to look for jobs, bro. I, I know it's not like the most ethical thing ever, but you got to protect yourself at all costs. You know what I mean? So because when they fire you, when they let you go and you're on unemployment or whatever it is and you can't find a job, I rather been prepared than basically not been prepared. OK, like Warren Buffett says, OK, Warren Buffett says all the time. I don't want to rely on the kindness of strangers. It's not a good feeling when you're basically just out in the streets and don't know what to do guys okay i'll see you guys tomorrow thanks for watching comment down below let me know when did you get fired and by the way i would say there was one time where i knew these things were actually going on with me it was when i was working at the gap you know in a seasonal and i knew for a fact they were not gonna call me back <laughs> they were like yo tommy you fold the clothes so slow you know and i was just like yeah i do you know what i mean like <laughs> it was look man I've never taken a job where I don't try my best, but you know, it's like having, trying to judge everyone on the same scale, but then you have people that are fishes, they're good at swimming, but not good at climbing trees. You have people that are cats, they're good at running, but not good at swimming. You know what I mean? So there are certain jobs out there, you're not gonna basically, they're not gonna be in your toolbox, let's just say that, okay? So the gap definitely was not in my toolbox. And, and, and in a lot of ways, it went against a lot of my ethics, like trying to get someone to buy something that I know they don't need. Oh, sign up for the credit card. Oh, get this guy. It was just not my thing, guys, okay? Oh, you get a 15 minute break. Aren't you happy, Tommy? No, I'm not happy. I'm not happy at all, okay? I'll see you guys tomorrow. Thanks for watching. As always, like, subscribe, hit the bell so you're notified. Comment down below a story that you actually have to share with me. And as always, also, if you want to call me, call me directly. The link is down below for free. Or send me a DM on Instagram at Tommy Bryson. It's my only Instagram, by the way. Or watch more content here. Or click right here for my other channels. I have other channels, guys, okay? Click those, subscribe over there, and support, and support, support the long-term team. See you guys later. Peace out.